Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Netlify functions. What we're going to do is use the Netlify CLI, the command line interface, to run our local development server. And then we're going to be able to pull in environmental variables that we're adding to our Netlify account. That will be things like our Notion API key, our Notion database ID. And we're going to do all this again with the Netlify CLI. Then once we actually write the serverless function, we're going to pull in the SDK for Notion, and we're going to use that to actually query the database and get back what we want so that we can populate our site with it. If you haven't watched the previous videos, you're welcome to jump into the GitHub and just jump into this branch and uh, get started with me right from here. All right, first of all, we need to go and install the CLI globally on the machine. You don't technically have to do this, but I think it's nice so that you can just use it in any project you have going. I should mention, I think in the intro video, I said you need Notion 12.0 or higher. It's actually 12.2 or higher. Uh, so you need to make sure you've got that. If you're not sure, you can do uh, node dash dash version, and it should tell you in any terminal on your machine. Uh, I am also going to install it locally here in the project. So that way, if I send this up somewhere else, pull it down on a different machine, that I've always got access to the CLI just with the simple npm i. Okay, so we've got that up and running. Uh, now what we need to do is go ahead and link this directory to our Netlify site and the GitHub and all that kind of stuff. So all we have to do here is say Netlify link like that. The very first time you do this, it's gonna require you to authenticate. And that's what I'm gonna do here. So it's gonna pull up the web browser over here. I'm gonna authorize it and then click okay. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and close both those out. And then it's coming over here and it's asking me, hey, should we use the current remote origin for this repo? Is that the site? And basically, yeah, it is. All right, so I'll just hit enter. And now these things are linked. That means I can run other Netlify commands. It shows you right here. You can see how all that works. If you come over here to their docs, they walk you through different commands that you can use. What we're gonna do is just use the Netlify dev command. So I'll say Netlify dev. And that's going to actually run my dev server. And the cool thing is it will pull in any environmental variables that I need to write my serverless function. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add those so that we can pull them in. So if I come up here to app.netlify.com and click on my site and then go to site settings and finally build and deploy. Underneath here, I'm going to see environment or environmental variables, or you can just scroll down and see that. And uh, what I'm going to do is add some variables. So let's call this uh, notion underscore key. And then another one, we're going to call it notion underscore DB for our database. And then let's jump over to the notion docs for developers. I'm going to click on my integrations and go ahead and grab my integration. This is what we created a few videos ago. I'm going to copy this out. Obviously you shouldn't share this with anyone and I will delete this once I'm done with this video, um, but I'm going to paste that in there. And then I need to come to my actual database here. Make sure I've clicked on this sidebar. So I'm selecting the right database. And then it's this 32 uh, number string. Uh, I think it's 32 digits or numbers. Uh, it's just right after the, the slash here. And I'm going to add that as my database ID like that. Okay, now if I hit save and let's go ahead and stop this server and then run it again, it will now actually pull in those environmental variables. In fact, if I come up here, you can see it's actually pulled in these keys and they've injected the keys here, the key and the database into my build settings and then started the dev server with Vite, which means now I have access to those in any scripts I write in my serverless function. That's what I need. So the first thing, now that we've got all that connected, now we actually need to build out the serverless function. And I've got the docs pulled up here, but basically it's gonna walk you through how to do it. And the important thing to know is that by default, your functions live in a directory just called functions like this, and you would access them uh, like this. So without like a .js extension. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're actually gonna change this up just to show you how to do that. And if I were to go back to configure and deploy over here, you can either do it on the GUI on online here by going underneath your site settings and then looking at functions and then just adding it right here. Or you can actually add it in a, a TOML file, which is what we're gonna do. So let's come back over here and let's go ahead and add that TOML file. So it's called netlify.toml. And then inside here, we can actually add a, uh, a build command. And we're gonna say that we wanna build our functions from our functions directory. And then I'm gonna come over here and actually create a folder called functions. And then inside here, 
we're going to grab a file. We're going to call this, uh, let's call it fetch notion.js. And then I'll save this as well. And now uh, if I come back over here, it's showing you kind of how to build it out. The important thing to know about serverless functions uh, with Netlify is you have to export uh, a handler method and it has to generally look like this with all your server side stuff inside. And so we're just going to wrap everything in that or reference it from the handler. And here's an example just to keep it real simple. If I come over here and add this in here and save it. Uh, now I should be able to come over this way. I might need to refresh here, but I'll do .netlify functions fetch notion like that. Yeah, and let's go ahead and try to restart it. And you see now that message hello world shows up over this way. Now that we've got stuff set up with Netlify, let's go ahead and work with Notion to make sure we've got everything we need. So I'm going to come back over this way and let's go back to just the developers and let's look at API reference. And as I start to scroll through this, it's talking through different conventions and how it suggests I approach querying databases and, and adding them and all that kind of stuff. But there's this nice little JavaScript SDK that they give you. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on this and it tells you, it brings you to this GitHub, which lets you know how to install it. So I'm just going to grab this, kill my server here and go ahead and install this Notion HQ client. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to basically start up a new process and pull in environmental variables and things like that. Now, I don't have to use this syntax because I actually have already pulled it in with uh, the Netlify CLI. But what I am going to do is go ahead and grab this right here because we do need to require this up top. And then let's go ahead. Let's see. I guess we do need to initialize a client as well. So I'm going to grab both of these. Uh, in this case, I don't need to do it like this. I can actually just pull in those variables from Netlify. Now, the way to do that, let's come up above so we can actually use it here, is I'm going to just destructure this and say uh, notion key and notion db. And let's close the sidebar so you can actually see what's going on here. Both of these I'm going to pull from uh, process.env. All right, so now that's actually being pulled in, or it will be once I start back up my dev server from the Netlify CLI. And then I can use that down here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to call notion key like that. All right, now let's come back over this way and let me move back to the API reference. And what we want to do is query a database. So if I click query database, not only will it give me the text I need right here and the documentation to figure out what's going on, but it gives me this nice little Notion SDK for JavaScript where it's actually telling me exactly what to write, uh, which is nice. In this case, they pull in a database ID, just manually pull it here. I've pulled it in as one of these environmental variables, so I can use it a little bit differently. But other than that, most of it's the exact same. So it says const response, and I'm going to query this database, and we'll look at filters and stuff like that in a little bit. So I'm going to grab all of this. Let's just add it down here. And again, this database ID can just be my notion DB. And then let's go ahead and stringify, instead of hello world, let's stringify the response, this variable right here where we're pulling in the database. Now I do need to close this off like this. All right, we'll save that and then come back over this way and start back up our dev server. And now you can see it pulls all of that in and all my data from my database is just sitting here waiting for me to use, which is awesome. Now, uh, this is obviously not exactly friendly to read. There is a There are a couple extensions you can use. I've got one here for Chrome. That's really helpful. I'm going to reload this and you see it actually parses this all out so you can see what's going on. In this case, I've got seven items it's pulling in as my results. And if I come over here, uh, it's called JSON Formatter. I'll make sure to add a link in the description. I would just make sure you only allow it to, to read the page when you've clicked the extension. Otherwise, it can access thing on all your sites. And uh, obviously, that's not as secure. It's used by a ton of people. So hopefully, you'll be fine. But that's just one tip. All right. So with that up and running, now what we want to do is actually limit which things are showing on our serverless function. I don't need all the things. Uh, if you remember the way we structured out this, let's go ahead and close this off so you can see what's going on, uh, is this is like a team. They might add a card here and then somebody reviews it and they say, hey, it's good to publish. And then once somebody publishes it, they just drag it over this way. So all we care about is this live data over this way. Um, so let's go ahead and see how we might query that. You see here, it's got a couple ways that you can actually, a couple params you can pass it. Filter, sorts, start cursor, page size. 
but it tells you these filter conditions here and it gives you an example over this way where you pass it filter and then you can do or and pass it two things or and or you can just pass it a single argument and so let's click this filter condition and it'll pull this just further down the page and it gives you an example here of what this might look like so you might say filter colon and then this would be the property name so like they have a property name landmark it's text and so it contains bridge so essentially what you're going to do is you're going to name whatever the item is so property and then whatever the the name of that that uh, property is in your database then you're going to mention the type it is so text or select or whatever and then depending on the type you'll have different options here on how you can query that so let's go ahead and just copy this out we're going to have to change a good bit of it uh, but i'm going to come in here and we'll just say filter and then paste that in and if i come all the way back up top here you see uh, that's what we've got here filter and then in their case they have or but you don't obviously have to have that and then again they have property and the name of the property is in stock the type of property is a checkbox and then you've got examples depending on what that is so in our case, if I come back over here, uh, with these are my statuses, and this is like a, a select list. And so you can only select one of those. Let's first of all go ahead and change the property name. We'll change this to status because that's what I, uh, name I gave it. In fact, if I come back in here just to show you that, um, that is right here, so status. It's just that I've got the status as the columns here. So status is what we're looking at, and the type is it's a select. So it can only be in one of these, obviously. And then I need to come back over here and figure out what things apply to the select type. So select filter addition, uh, conditions. So it, it applies to the database property uh, type of select, which is what I've got here. And let's see if I can get a little more room to read what's going on. So you can do equals if it's a string, does not equal, is empty, is not empty. So what I'm interested in would be equals live. So I'll just come down here and say uh, equals and this would be live. And here I can get rid of these. And let me add back in some commas and save that, and that should be all good to go. So now if I come over here and refresh, I had seven to start with, and I should have three now, I think, right? Yeah, these three. So you can see it's just filtering all that, and so I'm only getting the results I absolutely need, and then I can query that from the front end eventually when we get around to that video. Now, in addition to filtering, you can also sort data. So if I come over this way, um, you see it gives you sort options. And it gives you an example here where you, where you might sort it by um, the order or whatever. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to deal with the views. So you can't, for instance, say, give me the first one first, the second one second. Uh, it will just pass it in however it pulls in the data. Um, but there are ways to sort by the names of the files or the properties or all that kind of thing. And you can figure all that out in this sorts. But we've got what we need, which is basically we need just the stuff in that live column. And now whenever we hit this API endpoint from the front end, we can pull in just this data securely. And again, because all of our uh, API keys, our database keys, all that kind of stuff is hidden, although the database key isn't exactly secret, but um, I don't have to worry about it in my code either. Now that I've got all of that in Netlify, all I have to do is basically hit the endpoint I've got. Now there's one more thing we should probably do, and that is let's come in here and let's go ahead and wrap all of this in a try catch. So I'm gonna come in here and add this, and this just makes it a little safer in case something goes wrong. So we're gonna say try, and we'll close this off and then say catch. We're gonna catch any errors that come in. And here we're gonna say console.error. We're gonna console log the error. And then we will return a status code of 500 and a body of e.2 string. And this will return any errors we have. So for instance, if I were to come in here and change out this database ID for something random, come back over this way and refresh, it says basically this is not defined. All right, so um, it, it will send whatever error uh, we've gotten to the endpoint. Now you'll notice here I had to go to .netlify slash function slash fetch notion. Uh, there is a way to actually shorten that. You can tell Netlify to redirect. So let's go ahead and do that briefly and then we will call this one done. So if I come in here and say uh, redirects like that, you can redirect any page on Netlify to another page. So I'm gonna say forward slash API forward slash this wildcard symbol. Then I'll say two, so anything that goes to that, go ahead and just forward it on Netlify side to .netlify uh, functions and then whatever the 
the splat was at the end like that and then i'll say status of 200 and then let's save this and what i should be able to do is come over here and replace all of this if i can grab it here with api it should actually give me the exact same endpoint and that's a little easier to write and uh so if you'd like to do that you're welcome to do something like this as well all right, well, that is enough for this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to pull all of this from the front end with a simple JavaScript fetch and then populate the page data with the Notion stuff that we're grabbing here. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe and I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.